So as we continue our refined painting layer, we can start, if we get uh, antsy, we can start playing with these different experiments. You know, I did this shape on different modes, on a different layer. I think I settled on screen, kind of like color dodge. I could play with its opacity. And then I can play with erasing away from it. I'm on the eraser now at 66%. And these, these kind of experiments can work as almost glazing, right? Where this would be where I kind of glaze over this whole area in a traditional painting with light pink and let that light pink affect it just to see what would happen. And at any time, I can create a new refined paint layer and build on that. But I want to notice how much I still have to do with refined painting. And there's a lot of areas I just haven't touched yet. Mostly the hair, mostly the mouth, mostly the neck. And the shoulders. So I just go right back to it with my brush tool. And I want to check my brush settings. Make sure that they're doing what I want. And if the opacity is doing what I want. I also have the flow at 90%. And that helps control. It's a little bit more subtle that way. You can play with that or not. We haven't used flow too much. It's a little hard to distinguish between flow and opacity. But they do do slightly different things. But especially as you're blending colors together by layering. Just having the flow down slightly can help. And then there's a lot of needing in refined painting to reestablish your shadows. But I'm trying as hard as I can to keep color in them as I'm doing that. Because every time I mix just kind of black or gray into the colors, it muddies everything. And I'm going for kind of these pop color influences. Now the advantage of building it on multiple layers is I can always see if that helps or hurts. I think it helps. Right? And I can also just play the opacity of the multiple layers on top of each other. So this is a a nice way of blending too. If I just take them down, even just five opacity points, it helps blend everything together and soften it. Right? As opposed to always being at a hundred percent. And the goal for a finished digital painting is that it has what's called finish. That every part of it feels as considered as every other part. Doesn't mean that everything's as visually interesting. You know, it's hard to compete with the eyes of a portrait. But that the space underneath her lower lip is just as considered and worked on and thought about and interesting when you get around to looking at it as the eyes that would be trying to achieve a, a level of finish. So getting to those areas that you haven't worked on is always important. And squinting can show you where you might need more shading, where you're not pushing your value strongly enough. I don't have a lot of green. Maybe I want to find a green. Add that to my palette as I'm finishing off. Something like this. Now that's barely green at all. Let's push it up. Sometimes just throwing a random color in there can help help you see what things need and give you something to react to.
And as difficult as digital painting is, you can see how it gives you a lot of control over what you're doing. And then when you use option to steal colors, it's stealing them from all my layers, which is really helpful. And all the new colors that the different layers on top of each other produce. Let's get into the neck a little bit. Yeah, so now I've, I've done quite a bit. I haven't done the lips very much at all, but... have started to refine paint around them. Now I'm getting into the neck. Into the collar area. Remember, you don't need to erase. You just use more paint. And because digital painting is so based on these almost spongy marks layered on top of each other of your brush, I really like it when there's little patterns, like these little white dots in the red. Because even at just 50% opacity, you know, that can be a nice contrast with everything else. We are not using any compositing for this. But digital painting works beautifully in concert with other digital techniques, like on top of compositing or as an aspect of compositing. Or as a background behind a digital coloring. Or ways to get special effects on a logo. or It's wherever you want control. Another technique I sometimes do is I will hold down Option, say Layer Merge Visible, just to put everything into one layer, grab a chunk of paint I like, like this highlight in the forehead, because there's a lot going on there, right? Duplicate it, turn off and delete that merged layer, and then move that bunch of paint somewhere else, like onto the shoulder. And then I can blend that in different ways, in with what I have. And erase away from it. Soften its edge. Put it behind. Lock it. You know, so you can use your paint in multiple places. I could even try duplicating that, that same highlight from the forehead, and then inverting it, doing image invert, and then changing it to normal mode. So now everything that was dark is now bright, or everything that was bright is now dark, right? And then take that and use that maybe in the hair. It gives me totally different colors on the opposite side of the spectrum that I can use as something to react to, build on top of, and lock those. So there's no right or wrong as long as you're creating these pixels yourself. I could also, let's see, just put it on normal. Right, let's take its opacity, well, no, keep its opacity pretty high, but then just play with its hue saturation. Instead of inverting, just shifting the hue, you know, more towards the blues and purples, like so. Because it's 
a section of my own painting, there's a lot more complexity there. Just like I now have in the hair. So all of these things can, can wor work to help. And I can put all of them together into a group and see how much that builds as I do more refined painting. You know, it's doing a lot of the work for me. What I don't like to do so much is erase. So even if I think like the chin is done better in lower layers, I don't want to erase away from the painting layer I'm on. The answer is to always just add more paint. And if you're unsure, do it with layers. But always just adding more paint. And always check your brush settings. Yep, we're good. Now, if I were doing this on my own, not in the classroom, not recording it, for a YouTube, I would be playing Nina Simone music underneath this, and it would get me in the mood. It would inspire me. But if I did that for the class videos, then I would get these copyright warnings, and then whoever publishes Nina Simone's music would put an ad in front of the, the video. But there are a lot of artists that I've seen online that have kind of unique digital painting approaches, and a lot of them use music. Sometimes they'll just react to the rhythm of the music for their strokes or how they use the brush. And I tend to gravitate towards the ones that are the least formulaic. You know, the ones that just always use the same process, kind of step by step, to make their images, even if their process is really good, just don't seem as interesting to me. There's not a lot you can learn from that because painting is so individual. So I'm just interested in, in your exploring how you'll go about it, how you'll use these tools. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my sketch because some of those black lines might be throwing me off. And if there's anywhere I need darks that I don't have them, I can put them in. I can also see how this is looking on black. See how this is looking on white. Right. And see what I want to refine. And the answer is always going to be more paint. If there are edges I want to refine later, I... I can merge all the paint layers into a, a new layer with option merge layers. And then I can use the eraser on that. But right now it's more important just to keep building. I think I want to let the hair get a little bit bigger. And because I'm working only at 50% opacity, that means that the edges of the hair will be a little bit more translucent too, which can be nice, since hair does have that property. You can see the rim lighting on the hair there. So see if I'm building it on black, I'll do it on gray. I can kind of control where that is, if there's any color content to that. 